Finally, gents, uh, we reached uh, no return point where we are going to discuss uh, the main elements of uh, hydroacoustic equipment. Generally, uh, hydroacoustic PRS consists from two main elements. First, main part placed on board. Second element, additional elements uh, which are beacons placed at the sea bottom or at the movable object. As a movable object, we understand here a diver or an ROV which uh, uh, keeps the HPR bo uh, beacon mounted on the frame. For references, uh, we use IMCA guidance M200, where deep water hydroacoustic is described. And according to that guidance, on board part consists from next elements. Always we have operator station, which is the source of data output for our DP equipment. Operator station is a computer-based equipment with uh, a specific software which is installed and running uh, during uh, the use of HPR equipment. Operator station connected to transceiver unit, uh, which uh, generate uh, for us the pulse of uh, HPR signal. Uh, the HPR equipment needs uh, the compensation of pitch and roll. For that reason we will have pitch and roll sensors connected with HPR station. And uh, to find directions at sea the information about the heading is required. For that reason uh, the heading sensor is uh, also uh, connected to HPR station. And then uh, we need uh, to control the elevation level of antenna and for that is a hoist control unit responsible. And the hull unit separates uh, the vessel compartment from uh, outside water environments. Actually this is a remotely controlled valve which uh, may be activated manually or uh, remotely, as I said you. So guys, uh, on the next slide, uh, I propose you to analyze the situation when the hydraulic units of HPR equipment are properly maintained in dry dock. And here you see that there are some parts which uh, should be checked by a solicite personnel only. I mean maintenance team. And those are connected with hydraulic uh, gaskets and so on. And then uh, normally the HPR hydraulic pressure for hydraulic unit prepared by the electrical motor. So hydraulic uh, hoist unit is a combination of uh, electrical motor and uh, uh, hydraulic pump. And uh, when you have antenna hoisted, you have to bear in mind that uh, your operational draft may be changed till 5 meters, even more. And uh, before to come back in shallow water, ensure that the uh, antenna module placed back to the stationary compartment. As you remember, the stationary part of equipment of your HPR system is uh, placed on board but the second part of equipment is uh, placed at the sea bottom and normally HPR beacons which are used for HPR station are divided on three main operational types. Uh, first we call transporter. This is a standalone unit which is interrogated by a pulse sent through the water. A reply pulse is generated internally and transmitted back through the water to the ship 
and received as a transducer pole. Transducer pole is the uh, antenna itself, which is uh, mounted on board of your vessel. The second type of HPR beacons is known as a responder. Responder, remember please this definition. A responder is used where a hardline umbilical for ROV is available. Vehicles of these types are usually very noisy, providing poor acoustic conditions for HPR. Responder activated through the spare umbilical channel, which is used to trigger it and sends back answer via acoustic channel. And the last but not least, the pinger. Number three is pinger. The pinger acts as an acoustic device with one channel in use to send known acoustic signal through constant time intervals. In that case, transducer configured as hydrophone only and uh, the pinger sends uh, the identification code through known time intervals till the moment when the battery is out or when the charge in the battery is finished. After bird eye uh, view, let's uh, look at the transporter at a close distance. Transporter itself normally placed in light alloy pole pipe and uh, itself uh, it is a computer which powered by battery. This uh, battery powered computer consists from three main boards. One board is known as a mother board or main board for all elements. The second board is the RX board or receiver board. The third board is transmitting board with the opportunity to uh, broadcast the signal. And the one more board what we have inside is known as microcontroller board where uh, all uh, controlling elements are placed. Then transporter itself has uh, the bottom and up covers and the transporter prepared for certain operational depths. Uh, one of the examples what I have here is a standard transporter which may be approximately as one meter in height and uh, by 120 millimeters in diameter. But some type of transporters may be connected to the diver's belt. Those are not subject of uh, discussion right now and those are normally have uh, less weight and dimensions. And some type of transporters may be connected to ROV frame to indicate the movement of ROV at the sea bottom. Otherwise, uh, it is uh, hard to monitor the positioning of ROV in water environments. As a rule of thumb, any transporter has the indicating ring. This uh, transporter's indicating ring gives detailed information about the device and the code placed on the indicating ring can give you a lot of additional information about opportunities of beacon in use. First digit in the code says you about frequency at which can operate the beacon. Second digit covered in the code of model number gives you 
information about operational depths if you multiply it in uh, 1000. For example, 1 means 1000 meters, 2 means 2000 meters operational depths. The third digit of a model number code gives you information about beam widths of the broadcasted signal. 1 means plus minus 15 degrees, 3 means plus minus 30 degrees, and so on. And uh, for example, for one of the beacons which I have found, I have uh, the description list. And uh, the code MPT319DTR stands for. 3 means 30 kilohertz beacon in hands. 1 means beacon can operate at the operational depth 1000 meters. 9 means plus minus 90 degrees beam wides available for that beacon. D means depth sensor is inbuilt inside of the beacon. T means temperature sensor is available in that model. R means release mechanism is also supplied with that model. It means you may remotely disconnect the, the beacon from the dead anchor and the beacon will appear on the water surface. Also, producers of the beacons in the manuals can hide other codes for options of your equipment. And as example provided by me, uh, you see that there are many letters available for covered functions like C, D, H, E, I. I'm not going to read all of that, just for example, C means commandable transporter, T means depth sensor, H means heading magnetic compass available. E means external power may be connected to the beacon, and so on. So, before to use the equipment, uh, it's nice to find out what uh, functions are available for that equipment. And the source of information for us is uh, always the studying of produce a manual. So, next question in our program. Methods of deployment of HPR transporters. In other words, how the beacon delivered to the operational sea bottom. Here we have uh, next answers. If uh, the crew is going to use the only one beacon and if the type of hydroacoustic arrangement which is require only one beacon, then the beacon may be delivered to the sea bottom by the crew themselves. But if uh, the HPR system arrangement uh, requires many beacons at the sea bottom, then third party may be involved for installation of the beacons at the sea bottom and uh, also the calibration probably will be performed by the third parties who installed the array of beacons at the sea bottom. So gents, remember please and write in your notes. Method in use depends on type of HPR system arrangement and uh, later on in a couple of minutes probably we will discuss uh, the different types of HPR system arrangement. But uh, a standard uh, uh, transporter may be secured by bracket to the subsea structure or it may be moored to the seabed. And uh, the recommended method of mooring is to fit the transporter with a floater and normally uh, the crew attach uh, a sinker about 150 kg or kilograms 
and uh, also additional one or two meters of mooring chain is uh, recommended to use to have better penetration and holding of the sea bottom otherwise uh, the beacon may shift or may drift from the desired position another method of deploying uh, a transporter is to secure it into a purpose-built tripod which is then lowered to the seabed on the wire rope so just uh, look at the screen uh, there we have uh, the pictures which are showing us the explained methods